This is Lee Sanders with the LHSAA. Professionalism is one of the most popular topics I discuss with coaches and officials in all sports. Simply put, everyone expects professionalism of themselves and each other. This LHSOA video focuses on professionalism, and although this training originally targeted football and basketball officials, the information is meaningful to all LHSOA members. As an introduction to this second release, we've included some new content. Let's hear from a few baseball and softball coaches about the importance of professionalism. The uh, most important thing I think uh, as an umpire comes to the ballpark is he presents himself first of all in a professional manner. To start off the whole, the whole game with a professional uh, attitude sets the tone I think for the whole game. Umpires should be a walking rule book. They should be confident in their knowledge and be able to communicate in a way that all coaches can understand. Confident, but not cocky, kind of like what I tell my players. When it comes to umpire professionalism, the most important things for me are contact the day before the game with the coach, arriving at least 30 to 45 minutes before the game and checking in with the coach, and being able to keep composure when fans or coaches get out of hand. I believe everyone should be treated with respect. Um, this goes both ways. However, the umpires are running the show, and I believe their energy can definitely pour over to fans and coaches. It gives you an opportunity to, uh, to, to approach him in the right way, and you know that later on in the game that, that it's going to be a um, situation to where you're going to be professional, so you, prefer, you, you approach him as a professional, he approaches you as a professional. Uh, that sets the tone for everything that, that, a, that an umpire does. And it also lets the coach know that this is going to be handled in a professional way, uh, both from the standpoint of how you call the game, but also how the coach will approach that umpire if there is a decision that needs to be discussed during the middle of a game. Being punctual and starting off the game on the right foot is important. Uh, no one likes to wait around. Personal communication between coaches and umpires, this is a big one for me. And I see it all the time. I understand we have associations and relationships are built. However, I think it's extremely important for umpires not to engage in excessive communication pregame or between innings with coaches from one specific team. As innocent as it may be, I believe it's good practice to be as professional and neutral as possible. This video starts with a panel discussion about professionalism and then explores practical ways to exhibit professionalism in your next assignment. Thanks for all you do to support high school sports in our state. We hope you enjoy and benefit from this training. I am an official at heart love being an official and began calling football and calling basketball and, and dabbling a little bit in the baseball game. Um, began early just after high school and uh, just really fell in love with trying to get things right and being a part of the game and, and giving back to the community. So I'm um, just really excited to be here. Uh, currently I am a director of academic programs at North Lake Christian School in Mandeville, Louisiana and coach high school varsity baseball here and on this I guess free time during the fall, I'm a Big 12 referee. Just any time to learn how to get better and to make the, the proper call is kind of where, where I come from. It's uh, my second uh, foray into, you know, the LHSOA and the many great officials that are part of that great group. And I was a three sport official, so it's always great to see other basketball uh, officials and you know, baseball uh, umpiring is actually how I got my start into officiating at about 14 years old. You know, that led to football, football led to basketball, all sports, which I played at some point. So just a great honor to be talking to you guys. But currently, uh, this will be my 22nd year overall officiating. Uh, my 16th year in Division I, uh, my first year as a member of the Big Ten Conference after spending the last 11 seasons with the Big 12 and CFO West. So four years prior to that with Conference USA. So I've sort of done the little hop and dance all around and best part about it all is I've met great people. So glad to be here. I uh, started officiating with the LHSAA in uh, 1980 
and I've worked basketball, football, and baseball. In 1989, I took over the assigning of football, so this will be my 31st year assigning football. Wrestling basketball the last four years, and uh, I had the privilege of working at the college level in uh, men's basketball officiating. I worked uh, 32 years uh, before I had double hip surgery and had to take a little retirement, but I worked in the uh, SEC and Big 12 and Big 10 and ACC, so I uh, had a lot of good times doing that and look forward to giving back and talking about a little bit about professionalism today. Quick background, I've been a uh, head coach at the middle school. I've been there 31 years, so I've been the, the head coach at the middle school for the last 29 years. And I uh, coached football, basketball, track, and coaches. So, you know, uh, get around a little bit. And it, it helps for the people that you surround yourself with to be professional. officiating uh, high school football when I was a junior in college. Uh, my father was a high school and college official. And that's where I, I picked it up from. He officiated for 33 years. Uh, I have spent 40 years on the field in high school and college. Uh, I got off the field and had the privilege to get in the replay booth, which is another perspective. I'm still involved in high school football. I've been the uh, a signer in Alexandria now, this will be my 14th year. Uh, I do enjoy it and uh, uh, learn something new every year. I am a, uh, I'm a father of two, I'm a husband, uh, I'm a school teacher, and I just had the pleasure of finishing my uh, 11th season refereeing uh, high school basketball uh, for the New Orleans Association. I also have the pleasure to work uh, some college basketball. I work in the Sun Belt, in the SWAC, uh, Southland Conferences, and some uh, NAIA in JUCO. I'm going into my fifth year in the CFO West, which of course is the South and the Mountain West and the Big 12. Got my start in officiating, doing intramurals at the University of Dayton in Ohio and really loved it. And it's been a wonderfully rewarding experience for me so far. And um, as, I, as I tell many people outside of my marriage, it's the greatest thing I have going for me right now. And the topic of professionalism is definitely something that's near and dear to my heart because I've seen it both in the professional setting and uh, in the athletic setting as well. And uh, it's definitely something that is uh, integral to someone's uh, acceleration and their excelling as a, as a sports official. So. at Auburn, uh, left Auburn, went to play a seven years in NFL from Philadelphia to Green Bay to Seattle as a coach. Ended up going to Rhode Island, from Rhode Island to Temple, to Auburn, to Alabama, to Texas Tech. Came back to the University of Louisiana Lafayette as defense coordinator there for, for three years. Left there, went to the Saints uh, for two years, and, and here I am right here at North Lake Christian. So I can imagine just for you guys also, what you're getting from players, coaches. I mean, everybody is right there on you. So um, uh, just, I, I do want to let you know that, that we appreciate you. You know, as I was thinking about people that I, I know in the football officiating community that's local, local to Louisiana, um, people that I know that have a variety of different backgrounds really kind of shaped, you know, this, this group, this panel. Um, you know, Coach Willis is our football coach here at North Lake Christian and, you know, a lot of a lot of conversations that we've had over time has been through professionalism, you know, and that type of thing. So it's been fun to, to get to know him and, and talk about what he looks at from an officiating standpoint. You know, we, we've gotten some dialogue back and forth on what that that is. And, you know, when football officials show up on Friday night to his games, you know, what are some things that he thinks about? And with your experiences and your backgrounds as panelists, how does that help officials? Right. How is it going to help? us do a better job on the court or on the field. So, you know, just as we start to share ideas, you know, I'm hoping for the people that are watching at home today are going to take a few little pieces of nuggets and, and take it and apply it to their next assignment is really the goal. So, you know, you always treat the kids and the coaches in every game. I don't care where it is, what it is, or who's playing. Like that's the biggest game in the world that night. Because for those kids, it is. 
you know, and if you carry yourself accordingly and as a crew chief, that's what I always wanted from my guys and myself, you know, is that we gave respect to the game, gave respect to the kids and treated the game accordingly, you know, and um, never really, well, I can't say I never had any problem with any coaches. There's a couple that come to mind, but, you know, you, you still got to be the professional on the field, you know, so. You know, it's just great to be able to talk about professionalism, a little bit about me. I'm a project manager professionally, and so I deal with a lot of clients in various places nationwide. So professionalism is something that has carried over from the football field to my professional career. And when you're in a place like, you know, Kevin, who's, you know, into professional leadership development, and, you know, these are the types of careers that are a good mesh for us as officials, you know, for off the field, on the field, and it's always great, like Eddie, who's a middle school principal administrator, anytime you can have that background, you know, that brings in, I, I feel that's what helps make us a you know, total officials, but I was just, just the head coach. I, I yeah. don't want to, I don't want those responsibilities. <laughs> I'm just the head coach, <laughs> not administrator. Um, I go back to, and I don't want to just beat it down, but it's me, like, at the end of the day, sportsmanship, like, like I demand it from my team. Like I demand it from my staff. And, and the first thing I tell them, like, if there's going to be a penalty, it's going to be on me. Like, like I don't need you guys doing it all. I had to let one coach ask you that he wasn't a full-time coach. He was a former player. But he's so passionate. very passionate. And he wanted to, you know, chime in a few times. The referee's like, no, back up. So the next week he wasn't on the sideline. That's that's how we have to do it. Like that's our responsibility in the position that we're in, is to maintain that level of sportsmanship and show that example throughout. And neither side, whether it be a coach or an official, we can't be unsportsmanlike either. Like we, we can't talk to one another certain ways. We, of course, you're going to get caught up in the highest goals of games, but we keep it professional. Because once you cross that line of being unprofessional, now it becomes personal. And now all of us lose track of the most important thing is the game. Here again, respect for the game. I, that's a lot to unpack, Coach. I mean, there's a lot there that, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, what really resonates to me. And, and you know, Lucas, I'm going to kind of piggyback to you here. And Kevin, I don't know if you want to chime in, but uh, just from a preparation standpoint, right? I mean, Coach talked a lot about preparation. And, and let's put that really in, in high school officiating terms, both from a basketball standpoint and a football standpoint. What type of things can we do preparation-wise to alleviate that stress and that, you know, struggle that coaches have when they first see us step into the ballpark or, you know, pull up in that parking spot or that type of thing? So talk a little bit about that, Lucas, and then we'll ping, piggyback to Kevin there. Absolutely, Mike. I think uh, there are many things that we can do as officials to kind of alleviate that situation. Um, number one thing, you, of course, you want to you want to be on time to to a match. That's probably one of the most important things. You get there on time, and um, you 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 go to the locker room, whichever place uh, that you have. Uh, your, your appearance. I mean, I think uh, not only coaches but fans, uh, administrators, they are looking at at what you look like, and that's that's your that's your card, that's your first impression that you're given. Um, then uh, I, something that I like to do is, if I have a coach for the first time, I want to do a little research on that coach. Well, I just find out some uh, some some personal information from that coach that uh, that I can bring up in that first meeting. Uh, maybe knowing uh, something about his prior professional career. Uh, you know, example of Coach Will is knowing that he played in the NFL. That can be a nice little conversation starter. Uh, and it kind of eases up the tension that, that a coach might be feeling at that moment, you know. I mean, it, the preparation that goes into uh, any contest before you even arrive is going to be huge. I think one of the big things for me, especially if you are working a team, a school that you've not worked before, uh, or if that school has a new head coach, you need to know who the head coach is. And when you introduce yourself before the game, when you have that moment where you're first interacting with that individual, 
it's always best if you can, if you're scanning the field or scanning the court, you see him or her and you say, and you can go directly to them. It's a much, much more professional look if you know who that individual is rather than you're sort of hunting around and asking the trainer or you know, one of the players, hey, you know, where's Coach Smith or something like that. You know that. It just, again, it just shows that you came prepared. Another thing about preparation is just understand that uh, your evaluation and your professionalism begins when you first arrive on site. It doesn't begin when you first walk out in the field. It, the minute you drive your car or the van arrives on the site, whatever it is, your professionalism begins there. And that's in your dealing with the parking lot attendant, with the person who meets you at the parking lot and shows you to the, the, the dressing room, if there is that kind of person, uh, the person who makes sure that you have, you know, waters in the, in the locker room, all of that goes into your professionalism. It's not when you first walk on the field, it starts even before then. So preparation includes being prepared from the moment you arrive on site. So little things like having a car that's reasonably clean and not all trashy and having your stuff in one spot and you're not lingering and all these little things, they go into your professionalism for sure. Um, another thing for sure is to make sure that you have a sense of the facility where you're working as best you can. Uh, you know, it's always best if you kind of know where to go. You look like you know what you're doing. It all goes into your credibility. So that the best game that we can call is the one where they don't know that we're there. You know, I had a couple of those and it's just a great feeling, you know. And, and we all know it, it has to go with the teams, with the game, the whole nine yards. But I think it was two penalties in that game. And, you know, like one was outside and that was a false start. And one on each team. And, just great that, you know, everybody knew that they played and we were basically not there. We didn't have to do anything but police the game, you know. So you don't have those too often. But if you can get a game like that or if you can get coaches to feel that at ease, that they're just coaching and doing their job and the game is being officiated fair, that's the best feeling in the world. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, one of the – things that as a, a supervisor that I try to tell these guys is that, uh, you know, being professional, like uh, Coach Willis said and uh, Lucas about respect, and you need to respect the game and you need to respect your crew. If you can't uh, respect your crew and be on time, then that just tells me that your crew is not important enough for you to show up on time, and the game's not important enough to show up on time. So you're disrespecting your crew. You're disrespecting your uh, uh, the game. And so – and I didn't like it when I was a crew chief. I wanted my guys showing up on time so that we can start the game off right. And when you do that and you show up, it just – everything else doesn't fall quite in place whenever you have a crew member late, you can't start your crew meeting on time, or – maybe the, it tells you that, well, maybe this game is not quite, maybe it's not a high media game. So I'm, I'm going to show up late. And, and then that tells me maybe they're going to take the night off that night. So I instill that in our guys that let's show up on time. Let's be professional, treat the game with respect and treat your crew members with respect. And that starts it off as one of the things that can get our night started off. Right. One thing that uh, as an assigner, uh, I think is so, so important, uh, especially in high school. Uh, you've got officials that have been around for a while. They've got the experience, coaches that have been around for a while, and coaches know who they are. But now all of a sudden you have officials that are several officials that are showing up at your ball game. You don't know who they are. You've never had them before, or you don't think you've ever had them before. So what's the first thing? the impression what do they see okay so if the official is dressed properly uh doesn't necessarily mean that he's he's got the adonis body build uh unfortunately most of us don't but he's dressed properly he's clean uh he carries himself well he's serious uh he's not joking around because you can't beat a first impression you only get one chance for a first impression and uh uh, those first impressions are awful hard to change. Uh, and, and I know that when I see somebody and the way they carry themselves, they look confident. 
uh, they have an air about them, not cockiness, but an air about them that they, hey, I belong here. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm taking this seriously. I'm gonna give you my best effort. Uh, we're not joking around, back slapping, you know. Uh, nobody's out there to be friends. We're out there to do a job and do the best job we can be and do. So uh, to me, the first impression, especially for officials who work a ball game that they don't know, you know, the coaches or they, they, they it happens in playoffs, especially. But in the regular season, probably more so because once in the playoffs, you're getting a higher caliber official. And during the regular season, as we all know, we have what we have. And, and it's the better you can look and the better you can carry yourself to begin with, uh, the better the perception from the other side, the coaches are going to be towards you. That's what I think on, on those situations. But what I don't always have is a coach's perspective. And, you know, we're so fortunate to have Coach Willis to provide us that because as officials, I think we can only stand to get better when we're incorporating into our repertoire, hey, what is it that the coaches are, you know, looking for? And, you know, I know years ago at a NASO conference, you know, there was a session titled How It's Coached and How It's Called. Some of you may remember that, but, you know, this provided, a, it had a panel of coaches, a panel of officials similar to what we're doing. And, you know, by having an open and honest dialogue about, well, this is what I like, this is what I understand, this is what I don't understand, here's what I'm learning today. It just makes us better to understand the objective from all sides. You know, coaches are paid to win. The players want wins and not losses, although losses are going to occur. But one area of professionalism that I always make it a point whenever I'm meeting a coach, whether for the first time or, you know, you know, whether it's two or more times is I like to assuage him that we have had a great week of preparation. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about that preparation, but, you know, what we do leading up to the week is going to be, you know, the professionalism that we get to display while out there doing our jobs, that's sort of the icing on the cake. I mean, anybody can go out and call roughing the passer or a false start or a blocker charge or, you know, balls or strikes. But ultimately, we've got to get to a point where, and Michael, as you're learning, crew cheapens a lot harder than refereeing. Yep. Now you've got to take into account the different personalities you've got to manage, you know, within a crew. And if you can make sure everybody on your team or your crew whether it be for a night of basketball or on a baseball diamond, if you can make sure everybody's on the same page from a professionalism standpoint, that's going to go so much further because a coach is going to know that he can communicate. And I think Coach Willis would agree that ultimately coaches do want communication along with consistency. But if I can go up to Coach Willis and say, you know, have some idea about his background, and assuage him that we've had a good week of preparation. Maybe mention something that I picked up on in the, you know, last week's game as I was preparing. A light bulb might go off and say, I like this guy. He's personable. And more importantly, he's somebody I can talk to. So I want coaches, you know, at all times to know that I'm A, approachable. But that also extends to our crewmates. So we've got to be approachable to them. You know, we play counselor. We play, you know, advisor. We wear so many hats. Like I said, anybody can call rough in the passer. If it's not me, it's going to be you or somebody else. But it's what else makes that part of the total package. And, you know, I think any time that we can display that, you know, this is what we want to bring to the game from a business standpoint, you know, appearance is so much of it. But I think it just goes a long way knowing, you know, hey, we owe the game. And this is what the game owes us. Wow. I mean, I, you know, can't, can't say that much better myself. I mean, Reggie, that's right on point. And I think, you know, 
summarize that, you know, Lee's going to put this out there. And I think a lot of our officials are going to really resonate with that. I mean, those are really applicable things that everybody can do. And it's simple. I mean, it doesn't have to be hours and hours and hours and stuff like that. When you do the preparation bit, it could be 10, 15 minutes. And I think that's a lot of the, the thing that I want to, you know, the timing element of it, you know, I can log on to my computer and, and know just enough to go in there on a Friday night or, a, you know, Tuesday night basketball game or whatever, just to perform at the level that I need to do it. So, um, man, good points there. I appreciate that. Go ahead, Eddie. One other thing I wanted to add is, you know, like Coach is talking about who's seeing your stuff. You never know who's watching you at a game. You know, uh, guys, like say myself, I come to Louisiana to, to Southern or Grambling and to watch some guys. I might be at a high school game on Friday night, you know, in Shreveport or Baton Rouge, you know, and you never know who's there to watch you. So you always want to bring your A game. One thing I've stressed, and every time, every time I, uh, when I took this job, I think I said the best officials aren't going to stay in town and work the in-town games. They're going to go out of town one week, and they're going to work the Class A's, then they're going to come back in town and work the 4As and 5 by games. And let's understand that every game, every night, we got to be professional because it's important to somebody. Something's going to happen in that game. I don't care what level it's at, that a kid, a parent is going to remember some highlight of that game. And so our professionalism has to be there. So when I start assigning games, it's, uh, you know, who can, who can I put in the best position when you walk on the field? And I want the crews that can be professional. And they're the ones that will end up, you know, that coaches won't back, that coaches will say, I appreciate the way I could communicate with them, the way their professionalism was. And that's what I look at when I start assigning officials. And, and so I didn't, I didn't hear from him for an entire game. We had a, a pretty peaceful game from that point. So, I, you know, my point is that, you know, sometimes if you are, you know, if you are, understanding of the situation that you have and uh, you, you can make a much better situation without having to, uh, you know, deal with maybe technical files or anything like that. All right, let's go uh, 30 seconds. Everybody's going to talk 30 seconds, wrap up most important bit about professionalism. One quick, you know, thing that you can put into play that officials can take away today. So, We'll wrap it up here. Um, after that, we'll close this out and we'll rock and roll. So, Kevin Kiley, go ahead. What's give me a thirty-second pitch? I think that well, when it comes to professionalism, understand that it spans your entire existence as a as a as a official. So, as an assigner, I imagine that one of the things that most of them are looking for is for you to be on top of things and take care of your business. And so, when you get assigned a game, respond as quickly as you possibly can. Yes, I'm in, or no, I'm not. That has to do with your professionalism. Also. After contests, if you make a mistake, uh, own up to it. Don't try to squirrel away from it. Don't say, yeah, but. Official uh, supervisors hate to hear, yeah, but. Own it. Own your mistakes. The head of the CFO West, Mr. Greg Burks, has a great saying, and that is, there are two kinds of officials. There are self-evaluators and there are blamers. Which one are you? And that goes into you as a professional official. Kevin hit it right on the head, you know, but I think one of the best things as an official, because, you know, we, we're not going to get rich doing this, but be the best you. Something made you want to be a part of this, be a part of the sport, you know, whether like we talk about football, basketball, or baseball, whatever it is. So be your best you and always give your best, you know, and, and you can go Lord knows where. Well, I think uh... – one of the key points, uh, like we've all talked about, is uh, you got to have forward thinking, know what's going to be the reaction uh, to what your action is, and especially when you're dealing with uh, fans in the stands or coaches or administrators and even your crew. Uh, like I said, when we've talked about dealing with coaches, and, and I've always felt like never tell a coach no coach that's not right. I always say, coach, you might be right. And that's the first words he hears out of my mouth. Then we're professional with each other uh, and on, the, on that level. But I really believe if we'll have forward thinking about what's going to be the reaction to my action in my professionalism, it'll go a long way for helping us in our officiating career. Uh, to me, professionalism and officiating involves, uh, involves you, you giving that 
impression to the people that are watching, whether they are coaches or fans or players, that you you you've put some time into that particular avocation. You know, you put some time into your officiating career. Uh, you you did some preparation, whether it is with your physical appearance, is what is with your rules knowledge, or I mean, even even with your haircut. Sometimes, you know, I, I think if you if you can show that you put some time into it, just like they have prepared to be in that particular game, then it, it can go a long way. Good. Buddy. Uh, I think that um, when you communicate with sidelines, it's always got to be professional and courteous. You've got to understand, officials got to remember that I'm the calming influence when a coach is upset and he wants an answer. I have to be calm and get him what he wants. Uh, I can't be confrontational. I, I, I've got to do it professionally. Another thing about professionalism is the rest of your crew, you got to be a team. You might not particularly care for one of the gentlemen you're working with, but you've got to be a team. While you're on that field and work together, you are a team. So you have to put any kind of feelings you might have aside and concentrate on what you're there for, and that's to do the best job you can do for those two schools that you're working. Good. Reggie Smith. I want to thank you, Mike, for having me. Thank you to the fellow panelists as well. It's been an insightful discussion, and I hope it really benefits the members of the LHSOA. Uh, as far as professionalism goes, you know, a lot's been said, but at the end of the day, remember, you're being paid to do a job. That makes you, by and large, a professional. Now, some people get paid a little. Some people get paid a lot to officiate just like in any other walk of life. Some people get paid a little, some people get paid a lot, but make it your endeavor to be the best you can be, the very best you can be, and then get better from that point. Never stop working. Once you stop getting better, you're getting worse. Good point. Coach Willis, thoughts on professionalism? Um, anything to wrap up? I know you had your hand raised there for a minute, so go ahead. No, it was fine. I, I'll tell you what, just, I'll still equate professionalism to having pride in your performance and your preparation. But if, if today, if I'm sitting at home, if, I'm, if I want to be a, an official, if I'm a, a young guy learning to be an official and studying what it takes to be an official, the common thing I've heard throughout this entire conversation is relationships. And it's just an honor to be here today. My name is Mike Vandervelde. I am an official at heart, love being an official from day one. So I'm excited to be here. I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit on the topic of professionalism. I think the goal is to uh, really just continue to give everyone, every official, basketball, baseball, football, anything that we can learn to just to give us more of a, a toolbox, you know, to fill up the toolbox of, of what we can do every single time we step out on the court or on the field and any time to learn how to get better and to make the, the proper call is kind of where, where I come from. So just an honor to be here. Looking forward to kind of sharing a little bit about our topic today. Thanks to everybody being a part of it today. If there's any questions, I know Mr. Sanders and, and everybody else give out our information. I'd love to dialogue and connect with anybody who has further questions after the presentation. So, all right, into the topic we go. First off, professionalism, really big topic. Um, one of those topics that we just want to drill down. I think it's one of the more important, and I might argue it's the single most important piece of the, uh, the officiating puzzle. It doesn't matter what sport you're in. It's, it's really, it's, it starts at day one. You know, we always want to put our best foot forward, and professionalism is a huge part of that. And I want to give you some tidbits and some things uh, around that. So, as always, as an educator, I want to make sure we have objectives. You know, what's our goal for today? Uh, you know, we've got some, uh, an allotted amount of time here, but um, first and foremost, I want you guys to critically think deeper about professionalism and why it's important to, to that, to be an official. I mean, that's plain and simple. We want to make sure we control what we can control, plain and simple. You know, there are certain things that we can't control and we can't get stuck in the minutia of that, but we can control certain things that'll put us in a very good starting point to be successful when we get into the game. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today is really leading up to it, you know, leading up to the game, leading up to when you actually are under the lights and performing. 
Second piece of this is to just have a better perspective, you know, of the image that is being portrayed, you know, when someone shows professionalism on and off the court. You know, what does that look like? You know, where does that come into play um, on and off? And we're not just talking on all the time. Yeah, there's a short window of time there. You spend two hours officiating a ball game, but there's also a lot of hours during the rest of the week or, you know, hours between your next assignment that professionalism does not go away. And, you know, that's, that's one thing that we really need to understand going forward is that perspective. And then lastly, just to further develop and use professionalism to your next assignment. You know, we'll be on the field soon. We'll be in the court ready to rock and roll, roll here. And we have to provide, you know, a quality of officiating to our student athletes. They're looking for the best out of each and every single one of you that will be calling their game, you know, from the 1A ball game to the 5A ball game. You know, it does not matter. It means at every game that those student athletes spend time playing, it means everything to them. And you as an official are the one that helps um, facilitate that game. And that's a huge responsibility. And kids look at that all the time. And, you know, I see that as a, as a baseball coach, right? I'm a coach at heart. When I put on my baseball uniform and I get out in the field, you know, I'm looking at officials. I'm looking at umpires. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, what type of person am I getting today? You know, I want that professional person that knows what they're doing and stepping on the baseball field prior to the game. That gives me some comfort as the coach. But as an official, I want to be that person, too, because I know coach is looking at me as soon as I step out you know, of the field and I've got my stripes on and we're ready to rock and roll. So control the controllables, right? Real simple. Being on time sets the tone. Athletic director, principal, anybody who's uh, attending the PAC, right? They want you to be on time. You know, they want you to, you know, they want to know that you're going to be there at a certain time prior to the game. So, you know, always communicate that bit. You know, the second piece here is we want you to look the part, you know, dressing the part, showing up prior to the game, proper attire wearing the proper uniform that is subscribed by the mechanics manual and the, and the rules manual. That's important, right? You want to look the part. And then we want to see hustle, right? If you look interested and you, looked in, and you look engaged in the activity, that's something you can control. If you don't hustle, that's something you can control. And people see that, they read that, fans see it, you know, coaches see it, athletic directors see it. You know, then eventually when those people see it, you know, Mr. Sanders in the LHSAA office sees that, you know, the hustle bit has a huge piece that plays in the, in the professionalism topic. And then also knowing the rules, you know, knowing the rules. And I'd also put mechanics in there, you know, being in the proper position to make the proper call. It's always easier, easier to sell a call when you're standing right there looking at what you're supposed to be looking at, whether you're on the basketball court or if you're on the football field. So knowing the rules, knowing the mechanics, you know, doing those types of things, coaches can understand that a lot better. And, and when you do that, that's, you control that. You can control how much you're studying right now. You can control how much you're engaging with your fellow officials in your, your local rules meetings. You know, are you throwing play situations out there? How are you going to handle it? Um, you know, going back to social media, Facebook posts, you know, for different groups. I mean, there's plenty of officiating groups that are out there that I know that are posting questions. You know, are you engaged in those? Are you learning from the, the rules aspect of it and, and being able to apply those when you step foot on the field? So, um, you know, that's, that's really important. We want you to control the, the controllables there. And I think when you do those four things, that puts you in a really good starting point when it comes down to showing that professionalism and demonstrating that prior to your assignment. Reflect on what those four things can look like in your given sport or your given assignment. Merriam-Webster, let's go to the old dictionary. Um, you know, what are we looking like with the term professionalism and what, is, what does that mean? You know, you can see it there on the screen. Right? You wanna put forth that good, that, that good step there and, and display yourself in that manner. You know, some synonyms here, expertness, right? The ability, you're polished, you show competence. You have a certain level of proficiency here or skill and talent ability. You're adept at what you are doing. You know, that's what professionalism is looking at. Those are things that you want to make sure, you know, you're doing. You know, the opposite, the antonyms are being clumsy, right? Crude, you know, heavy-handed, you know, unprepared. You're an amateur, right? Inexperienced. You know, those things, those antonyms are not the positive terms that we want when we step out on the, on the, on the court or on the football field. So, you know, let's try to stay away from those right? You know, we go back to our objectives of the session, you know, what can I do to sharpen my skill set? You know, how, what can I do to not be clumsy? What can I do to not be crude, right? 
those are things that I want everybody to kind of consider as we go forward, you know, when we display that professionalism. So be an expert, be polished, you know, show some competence. You know, you can donate a few time, a few minutes there. You know, five to 10 minutes of studying rules is better than not studying rules. Let's talk rules, let's talk mechanics. Hey, I heard about this situation. You know, that doesn't take long and, and frankly, you know, yeah, it's, we're talking football or we're talking basketball and it's, and it's fun and, and stuff like that, but you're also making friendships. Don't be thinking about that. A lot of it goes into why we officiate. You know, I want to be a professional, man. I want to get back to our community. I want to stay connected, right? I want to expand my social and professional network. You know, a lot of business is done when we're traveling to games with our friends and our buddies that are on the crew, right? Can we, can we build off of that, right? We want to stay active. We want to stay in shape. We want to be role models, right? We want to challenge. We want the challenge. It's a competition of getting things right. And then there's pride and growth as we climb the ladder. You know, what assignment do you want this year? Competition between two really competitive teams in your area. I don't know, right? It could be a variety of different reasons that there are some assignments out there that you are seeking. Well, how do you get those assignments? Being professional is going to put you in those spots. That's just the reality. When you're professional and you're doing a good job and you're showing those, those things, those intangibles of professionalism, your, uh, your uh, regional coordinator will be putting you in those games because frankly, they have that trust in you. They trust that you can do a great job and you are putting forth a great image for yourself, for your group or your uh, association and that type of thing and, and just represent the group well. So a couple tangibles. Take these with you. Attire, right? When I look confident, you know, what type of accountability do I have? I know that's a big buzzword right now in the officiating community, accountability. Coaches want officials to be accountable. What does that look like, right? And, and how can we be accountable in this day and age? And that's an interesting dynamic that uh, supervisors and uh, regional coordinators of officials have to kind of work, work through. But if we're showing professionalism, Coaches don't necessarily have that accountability gripe and, and complaint there. So again, we talked about expert knowledge of rules and mechanics, showing great poise, right? When the going gets tough and, and things get intense, right? How do you act on the field or how do you act on the court? You know, do you get heightened level of anxiety? Do you start rising, rising, rising that you can't control your tempo of your voice? Or do you take a deep breath, calm yourself, and communicate with a coach in a positive manner when things don't go right. What is your poise like, right? How are you, how are you managing that, right? Michael Jordan had great poise. You know, give him the ball in the last few seconds of the game, he's probably going to make a shot, right? So his poise was always there. How can we do that as an official? What, what type of ethics do you carry yourself with? Make sure that those are strong, right? Own your mistakes. We make mistakes all the time. You know, there are certain times, certain calls that I did not like that I made last year. Right. And so when you have conversations with coaches about why you made that certain call, you got to own that mistake. Coach, I may have not seen it that way. Right. This is how I saw it. This is why I made the decision I made. You know, we're probably going to disagree here. And, you know, when it's all said and done, we get graded, we get evaluated. If it's the correct call, great. Right. Yeah. I told that coach, I told him what I saw and I was right. That's great. But if it's not, and the next time you get that assignment with that coach, how do you respond? Man, coach, I missed it. Right. I missed that. Oh, my bad. Uh, and, you know, it's just one of those unfortunate situations. Be organized. Take care of your paperwork. Take care of your documentation, assignment pieces. All of that good thing is pretty self-explanatory. And then lastly, lastly is always officiate with a growth mindset. Right. How can I get better? I think, you know, I'm, I'm presenting on this and, you know, I'm always thinking and reflecting on, you know, how can, you know, I want to learn. I want to continue to learn this in this game. What can I take? You know, just doing research on professionalism. I want to apply what I'm preaching today when I step out into that field in a few weeks here, you know, whatever Big 12 assignment that I get. I want to do that. I mean, I want to be able to, to communicate with coaches effectively and be professional. And, you know, the spotlight is there. It doesn't matter if you're working a, a ninth grade game or a junior high game. I mean, that's I want to be professional no matter what. And as soon as I can get on the field, that's what I want to be able to do each and every single day. So I want to apply that and, and have that growth mindset. I think we can always get better at something, you know, whether we make incremental growth steps or large growth steps. I mean, I want each one of you today to, to pick something and take that leap and, and try to find something that you can be a little more professional with. All right, various areas. We want to talk a little bit about 
um, you know, where we can show professionalism, more tangible pieces here, meetings, right? Other officials are watching you, clinics. Clinics are a great way to show professionalism, mentoring younger officials, social media, right? Be careful, be, be careful with that. Weekly duties, be professional there, right? Expectations, referees, giving crew, crew members topics and things that they need to, to do and, and get together prior to the game on Friday or Thursday or Saturday. Um, accept your assignments on time. Simple things, that's professionalism. You know, if, uh, let's see, Buddy Jagra gives me an assignment, I want to click send, you know, I'm accepting it because I know, hey, two weeks out or three weeks out that these are the dates that I'm available to work and you've, you've set that in Arbiter. I want, he, he wants to know right there when he assigns you that you're going to accept the game because there's, it's hard for assignment secretaries and regional coordinators of officials to put you in those games. But there's, there's a lot of strategy behind that. And so being professional is making sure your calendar is set. And we know things will pop up, but you communicate that on the back end. But if you have that block open, man, accept that on time so that, that we can continue to, to progress as officials and prepare for a game that we, we have been assigned to. So that's a huge bit of professionalism. Communication with others. That's something that's simple, right? Communicate with your teammates, your official officiating buddies, your schools, your coaches, the players. Those are all tangible ways to be professional. You know, arrival, right? Being on time. We talked about that at the beginning. You know, what's your pregame look like? Are you preparing for a pregame? You know, how do you show professionalism during the game? And then lastly, postgame when you're getting out of there and getting ready for your next assignment. So those are all areas that you want to show your professionalism. Again, back to just stressing it. I know it's a big point, but danger lurks outside the lines, right? Biggest issue here, social media communication, pregame and postgame assignments, right? Let's, that's not on the field, right? Pre and postgame. Social media again, right? And then professional conduct afterwards. So you represent yourself. You represent the officiating industry, your association, your signers, your officiating partners, right? You got to act accordingly here. You know, we want to make sure that we're promoting officiating in a positive light and with a general feeling that we have pride in what we do. You know, you're an, you're an ambassador. That's the reality of it. You're an ambassador to the game. You know, you have a lot of unique information that's not accessible to the public. You got to hold on to that, right? You got that, those ethical reasons and restrictions that, that are behind that piece, right? It's inappropriate to communicate about specifics, you know, with your assignments you know, with other officials, conferences, schools, coaches, you know, players or any other personnel. That stuff is pretty sensitive information. So do not engage in specific play and or ruling evaluations and commentary. We all know someone makes a bad call, things like that. You don't need to blast that on social media, right? Um, communications among other officials for learning purposes should be done privately, right? Do it privately. Talk to that person that made a tough call. Ask them what they were looking at. You know, be a mentor and guide them through that thing. You may be there the next week. So just be mindful of those things. Then obviously just direct communication via email and, and those bits of information. Once you put it out there, it's out there. So, you know, be, be very clear and concise with your information and, and texting and that type of thing. So just be, be mindful of that. And that's really one of the biggest takeaways today. A uh, few more things here, communication with coaches. I know you guys talked a little bit about that in one of our other topics. Um, that's being presented at this time. So I would definitely point you to that. And as another, um, I guess it's just another session that you guys can, can look more into, but you know, just staying calm, right? Acknowledging coaches feelings, right? Real important. Acknowledge, Hey coach. Yeah. I hear what you're saying there. Yep. I can understand your perspective on that. I was standing in this position and this is what I saw, you know, kind of talking to them in a, in a manner that you are listening actively, right? Active listening is big and then providing the specific concise information that you can give to that situation. So be an active listener, eyes, contact, don't interrupt, let the coach get it out, know the limits, right? Know the limits, give them some wait time, don't have to, don't, don't have to jump into the fire right away, right? Take your time before you get in there, but then walk coaches to a different spot. They can walk and talk, hey, come talk to me over here, coach. Let's go, let's go back to the coach's box. Hey, coach, we got 28 feet here on the basketball court, let's go over here. You don't need to be out here mid-court with me. You know, those are things that we want to make sure we put into, uh, put into practice. So, you know, find that common ground. It's okay to find that common ground. And, and if you can come up with a good solution at the time, awesome. If you can't, that's okay. Coach, I'll get back to you on that. Hey, I got to go work this play. I'll come back to you at the next break. That's okay. But just make sure you go back and communicate it because that's going to validate their thoughts behind all of it. So really, really important. Last thing is just move on. 
right? Play one, don't, don't sit on play 20 and go back to that topic. Coach doesn't, he's done. He's moved on after he's argued. Don't go back and start that fire again. Do not put water on it, man. Keep that water. Once the water's there, get it out. Done. That one is over. You'll have plenty more issues the rest of the game that you can address and handle with the coach, but do it in the same manner. Be calm, give him some wait time, make sure you're having it on equal footing in the right area. Um, Non-aggressive posture is another big piece, right? Don't go chest to chest. Don't do that, right? Stand off, you know, to the side, shoulder to shoulder, be on an even playing field. Coaches will respect that. They'll see that. And that's a great sign of professionalism. Communication with regional coordinators, simple. This is some professionalism that we want to make sure we do. So accept assignments. All right. Block your calendar. Get your feedback for training and growth and development. That's professionalism. Respect their time. They're busy. I cannot tell you how much time is spent to get the proper assignments out there. All right. Respect that. Most of the regional coordinators that I know are ag, they just, they're, they just antag, I'm trying to think, it's agony. Let's put it that way. It's agony for them to make assignments. They want to put the best crews out there and the best assignments and do that for the, for the good of the order. That's what they want to do. And they're, they're spending a lot of time doing that. Things change, different people have to back out. All of those things are moving pieces. So you can't take those different changes of assignments personal, right? It's just, you know, trust that they're making the best decisions and they have a lot on their plate. So please respect their time. Uh, understand their balance and the big picture and the development of the program, right? You may be the next person up for that next big assignment, right? You never know. And, you know, you go off and you're unprofessional, that puts you back at the bottom of the list. That's the reality, plain and simple. So, you know, you always want to be in that right spot. I can remember my first few assignments. I'm like, man, I'm working this game. I feel like I should be working this game. Can't do that. You can get trapped in that game all day long and that's not professional. I had to make a real conscious effort to say, hey, there's a bigger picture out there. I've got to see that bigger picture and trust that process. And, and that's what I really devoted a lot of time to and thinking about it in my younger years as, as an official. And it's been very uh, pivotal for my career. And then work to get better. We're not going to make all the correct calls, but we want to work to get better every time. So they want to be able to that, – that trust. They want to trust that you can make the right call and make the right decision at the right time. And so that's, that's building that trust and, and professionalism for your, your regional coordinator. And then lastly, you know, take care of your paperwork. You know, I've got a, a pretty good buddy of mine who doesn't hand in his paperwork of file reports and things like that. You know, we want to make sure that we, we do that. There's a lot of good information and, and growth and development that come out of those things. So take care of your paperwork, communication with others and other officials, right? Be professional there. How do we communicate early and often, be on time, travel, attire, arrival, get those things ahead of time, get those things done early. Weekly preparation, what are you doing to prepare for your next game? Knowing who's working games, there's so much information out there right now with teams and stars and players and all that kind of stuff. Get some info on those guys. That's great to build rapport and professionalism. If you talk to a coach about their players a little bit, hey, what are you gonna, you know, certain things, tendencies, and you know what you're talking about ahead of time, those coaches love it. And they know that you've done your homework and you can put those little tidbits in your back pocket for your toolbox. Coach is like, yeah, this guy's done his homework today. This, this official is ready to go because they know what type of scheme I'm doing. We have plenty of film out there, right? Huddle is amazing. Basketball, football, you know, it's out there. And I know baseball and softball umpiring as well as get to that point. So, you know, do a great job of that, you know, use that, take five, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, spend some time on that. You know, a little bit goes a long way. Um, so that's really, really important. And then again, I can't hit, hit the, the nail on the head with paperwork and spending time to take ownership of that. And then last but not least, you know, address conflict with the game official ASAP. If you have a conflict with another official on the field or at the court, talk to them afterwards, right? Cool off for a few minutes, give them a call, you know, talk, talk it through, handle it professionally. And those are all good bits of, of information regarding um, professionalism as a whole. So, you know, those three objectives that we talked about at the beginning, you know, what can you control? How can I create a little more of a toolbox and, uh, you know, go forward in the growth mindset to continue to learn as an official are, are things that I hope you would take away from, from today. So appreciate you listening.